welcome to Support Life, a program focusing on current social issues from a life-affirming perspective. I'm Gavin Bolch, and later in the program we will be featuring the Street Talk interviews that we recorded in December, and with members of the public in the Burke Street Mall in the city. But for now, our guest is Jane Munro, and she is a representative on the UN Commission of the Status of Women. Jane, welcome. Thank you. I hear that uh, you come from the country, Beechworth, Everton Way. Yes. So tell me about the 40 acres. Well, for, we live on 40 acres, 10 kilometres out of the township of Beechworth, about 25 from Wangaratta. Um, we moved there 30 years ago. Uh, at that time we had four children. We had three more after moving there. Um, and I think it was a great place for our children to grow up. In fact, they often say that sort of thing now because they know that they had a lot of freedom. Yes. So the bush, the horses, the ferrets um, mm. added to the number of seven kids, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, it uh, backs onto a state forest, does it? Yes, it does. There's a, just a small natural creek that doesn't really run very well in summer. But, um, and beyond that is quite an extensive area of um, state park. Wonderful. Mm. Well, I can't think of a better place to raise children than... Um, I can't either. And I think our children appreciate that yes. now. I don't know that they did at the time, <laughs> and at the time when we were driving them to cricket or to um, you know, dances and things like yes. that when they were younger, we thought, this will never end. But uh, they, did, they do appreciate it now because they could just roam through that bush. Yes. Yeah. Well, now, let's come back to this um, role and experience that you had as a, a member on the UN Commission of? Commission for the Status of Women. It's held annually in New York uh, in March. The weather's freezing. Uh, it's hovering around zero most of the time. Yes. And there are probably about 6,000 women are allowed to, or eligible to attend. They don't always have that number. I think there were 3,500 this year. So it's a big affair. It's a very big conference. Wow. So this is a, a UN sanctioned yes. get together? Yes. Okay. Yes. And it's um, partly talk fest, but partly outcomes that are good? It's. Uh, it's run on th uh, several different levels. There's the government level. Government will send a couple of representatives to the Commission on the Status of Women and they will negotiate a document which is published at the end of it. There's a, a preliminary document that's issued at the beginning of it and then the government's representatives will go through it word by word, phrase by phrase, until they come to an agreement. Mm. So that's happening in the background while the Commission while the whole um, conference is on. It runs for two weeks. Then at the same time, governments will run what they call side events. And um, the NGOs, the non-government organisations, will also run what they call parallel mm. events, all in the vicinity of the uh, United Nations. Wow, that, that's really something. Now, mm. um, there are three words that are... The most dangerous words in the world. What is that? It's a girl. It's a, a girl. girl. Mm. Tell me about that. There has been a, a video produced mm -hmm. um, called It's a Girl. It talks about how the girl child is in very many um, countries in the world, a girl child is not um, wanted. So when a child is born, and the person who has helped to deliver the baby says it's a girl, it can be a death sentence. Or if the mother has had an ultrasound um, done beforehand and she discovers that she's carrying girl, a girl, again, it can be a death sentence for that particular girl. So uh, old-fashioned words like infanticide. Mm. Okay, tell us about what's happening here. Well, it actually becomes femicide. It's female girl, females that are being aborted or killed. Um, this particular video was produced on the situation in China and in India, where there are, um, even the UN has calculated that there are 62 million girls missing in India. Now that, when they say missing, they don't mean that they're going to turn up somewhere. They're actually eliminated. So they've been killed in one way or another, mostly by, these days mostly, before birth. 
Okay, so if there's such a shortage of women in the world, what other problems do you have to deal with because of this um, abortive killing spree? Yes, well, I, when I first started reading about this, I would have thought that it would have meant that girls would have been more popular, more respected, but it doesn't work that way. That's the strange thing about it. It's actually, um, it's led to an increase in trafficking in China. It's got to the situation where the countries that border China, like um, North Korea, uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, they are now trying to educate the young girls, particularly in rural areas, that they have to be very careful because so many of them are kidnapped and taken into China as brides for the many, many men now in China that will never have a, uh, a wife. Because they believe that the imbalance is now 37 million more men than women in China. So we have this, well, slavery and, yes. uh, and trafficking mm. of, 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 women. of huge proportions of women. Yes. And they're young women. Yes. So talk about the age here. What's, what's being I gather that they are on? young girls, say in their mid-teens, probably into their early 20s. All that right. are kidnapped or sold by family members, quite often by the sounds of it. There's a report that just came out only days ago. Um, it was on AFP News saying about the numbers that are being um, kidnapped and taken across the borders. Mm. Yeah. Well, it, it sounds like that uh, more of us who have a voice, uh, men and women, need, need to stand up and, and uh, do some research and take notice of this. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Now, you've spoken uh, at the UN in, in this particular assembly. Mm. Uh, what was it that you wanted to inform others who were delegates? The theme for this year's uh, Commission for the Status of Women, it was the 58th one, was the Millennium Development Goals, which were developed in the year 2000. And uh, they're now, they'll be due to finish in 2015. And they're going to be replaced with another set of goals, or they're talking about replacing them with another set of goals. They have been reasonably successful in some areas. One of the, of the themes, there were eight of them, um, the fifth one was on maternal health. Now one of the ways that some very powerful UN groups seem to push uh, maternal health is to try and increase the number of women who are on the pill. They see that as being um, a means of not them having not having really big families, that that they feel that that would be better for them. It would help them to be able to overcome poverty, etc. But it has a detrimental effect because the women who are um, taking the pill uh, have a very high intake of oestrogen. That oestrogen um, ends up in the river systems through the urine. It ends up in the river systems. It does the same in Australia. It is having a really detrimental effect on small animals and um, fish downstream from um, sewerage treatment plants in England, all across Europe. Mm. The European Union has fairly recently issued a document saying that they want the amount of um, oestrogen in the water to be reduced. Okay. All right. Mm. Well, we'll come back to that yes, uh, okay. point in yep. a moment. Mm. You're watching Support Life, and we'll be back after the break. <music> Welcome back to Support Life. I'm Gavin Bolch, and our guest is Jane Munro, who is the National International Secretary of the Catholic Women's League, of Australia and is their representative on the UN Commission of the Status of Women. Jane, welcome back again. Thank you. And we were talking about uh, this particular gathering at mm. the UN and how there were uh, two major points for you to consider. One was point five, which was the position maternal status. Maternal health. Maternal yes. health. And point seven was about sanitation and uh, water purity. Yes. Now. Um, if they get one wrong, it affects the other. And you were saying... They've got them wrong. <laughs> we just drew a comparison between those two because we felt that it was worthwhile pointing out because they were the idea was to ask for things that have been successful and also areas that need to be um, improved. 
and we felt that was an area that needs to be improved. The um, uh, oestrogen from the pill ends up in the water system. It affects the water system. It has a very big effect on the fish because many of them become intersex, which means they don't breed as well. Uh, so in third world countries, it's having a big effect mm. on the livelihood and the av availability of food for people in those countries. But it's also having quite a big effect in, in uh, European countries as well, say England and America. They're noticing the difference downstream, particularly of sewerage works. Well, so we might have our cane toad, but we've also got something else that's more insidious, mm. really. Mm. Mm. So um, Australia. It's been reported in Australia. Okay. Yes, it has. It's been reported in Australia in the Murray River. Yes. That there is a increase in fish that are hermaphrodites. Mm. Okay. Well, there's there's a real concern. So, mm. uh, what we find is that at this conference, when um, some of the grassroots people who are dealing with these issues all the time get together, um, where are they able to make improvements? You have informed the UN about the side effects of oestrogen, too much mm. of it. What other um, outcomes have you experienced? Well, this is my second visit to UN, the one that I went to in March this year. Uh, last year I was very impressed with a woman from England, she's a doctor. Uh, she was gathering a whole lot of information from the countries of Africa where uh, genital mutilation is carried out and uh, sh she was gathering information on the health effects the um, because it affects the women's health forever after it's been done to them and because of that it's increasing the cost for the government to be able to you know pick up health care and that mm -hmm. sort of thing mm -hmm. so she was gathering all the statistics that she could manage and she was visiting all 28 countries of Africa that were where it's carried out um, over a period of some years to be able to talk to the government and try and advise them on ways that they could overcome it. She was also advocating for women to have a different type of coming of age ceremony, which I thought was a really brilliant yes. idea. Yes. And I was very impressed with her work. Um, I was very impressed with the work of uh, Reggie Littlejohn, who's, um, she runs an organisation called uh, Women's Rights Without Frontiers. Mm -hmm. And she's particularly, her big campaign is against the one-child policy in China. Uh, she's featured in this movie that we showed before. She's quite a bit of information from her, but she works very hard to try and help women in China, to um, bring to people's notice what's going on in China with the one-child policy and the fact that so many girls are aborted and also that women are forcibly aborted right up to practically to birth. Yes, yeah. now that's, that's a tragedy. Mm. Let's for a moment um, consider uh, men in this debate. And I'd like mm. you to show me something that you carry in a little purse and uh, we'll take it from there. So here we are, <laughs> sipping up from the purse and we have? A little tiny model of a, a 10 week old baby. 10 week old, you know, yes. when men see that model, mm. uh, a big change takes place in them, I've discovered. Uh, yes. First of all, they might not be there for the ultrasound mm. uh, or the the uh, 3D imaging that, that you can now get on a, a DVD. Yes. Uh, but when they see the model and that here is a son or daughter, mm. um, pretty close to complete as far as mm. details and yes, heartbeats that's right. And things, it is. Yes. Um, it's a wonderful visual concept. Now, do you carry this with you? I do. It's amazing the number of times I have actually found it useful to be able to talk to somebody. One time I gave it to a woman and uh, was talking to her and she looked at it and she, she got it and she was kind of holding it and like as if she was cuddling it and sort of stroking it. And she said, I'm 10 weeks pregnant. So it really hit her that this was the size of the baby that she was carrying. Yes, yeah. yes. Very, very it's important. It's very powerful. It is. Mm. And I think we're living in a visual age. Yeah. where our um, young adults today, and, and of course younger, um, are not, not just texting mm. uh, without vowels, but they're <laughs> sending um, visual moving image stories of yeah. their day or, or mm. their moment or something that's important. Mm. And uh, we need to uh, use these visual metaphors uh, more mm. frequently. Yes. Well, I think that's where that movie, It's a Girl, is a very powerful one because it talks to women 
who have yeah, that's that, that's their life. Yes. They've chosen to. Well, if it starts with a woman from India who um, killed her first eight girls. She took wow. the reporter to the mound where they were buried, and she said, "What's the good of bringing girls into the world?" And that's really very sad that she would think like that herself as a woman, but also that that her whole society doesn't value women. Yes. Well, there's a cause for all of us, as I say, mm. us men to get on board for as well. Mm. And perhaps it's um, uh, a movie that we need as males to sit down and, and look at. Yeah. Mm. Back to um, your seven children. <laughs> yes. What, what are they doing around the world in Australia at the moment? Our oldest girl uh, lives in Canberra and has two little children. Um, so she's a mother, but she's also uh, a scientist, a zoologist. So she's working part-time and looking after her two little kids part-time as well. Our next um, child is a boy. <laughs> child, he's 40. <laughs> uh, and he lives in America. Um, he's teaching geography online through the Kansas University. The next door to Monica works in uh, Melbourne um, as a graphic artist. Uh, next one is uh, living in Ethiopia. She's a teacher and she went to volunteers as a, um, she worked as a volunteer in Ethiopia. Um, in a, well, it was in a teacher's college yes. originally, but now she's actually working in an international school in Ethiopia. Do you want me to keep going with the yes, list? Yes, 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 do. <laughs> the next boy is a mechanical engineer. The next one's a twins. The girl is a, um, a nurse mm -hmm. uh, working in ICU. And the last one is still at university doing a music course. Mm. So here we are. We have a, a, a very outgoing, creative, international, uh, interested... Certainly international. <laughs> yes. Um, so, you know, here's a legacy which you leave. And your participation at the UN... Uh, says an awful lot for the Women's League that you're involved in. Now, mm. how are you supported in this work? Do you pay for your own airfares? No, and no, no, that's covered by the um, members. Um, I calculated at one time that it works out to be about a dollar per member for the whole of Australia. So I actually gave a talk after last year's uh, conference and said to them that it costs each of them a dollar to send me to New York and uh, asked them was it worth it at the end. So <laughs> a few of them were kind enough to say yes. <laughs> oh good, okay. So your um, report back to the Australian Catholic Women's League, mm. what did you say in that report? This year I noticed that there were three things that cropped up um, fairly frequently and uh, they were um, comprehensive sex education, uh, gender equity and or equality, and the family. Well, on those three notes, we shall conclude the interview. Okay. And I look forward to catching up with you uh, at another time. Okay. You're watching Support Life, and that's all for our conversation with Jane Munro. And after the break, stay tuned because we'll be looking at our street talk interviews that we recorded in December with members of the public in the Burke Street Mall in the city. Hello, David. Welcome to the Support Life program on Channel 31. My name is Alexandra Ryan, and I'm hoping to ask you a few questions today. So do you value human life? Of course I do, because without it, where would we all be today? Like, there would be no such thing as human race or anything, so of course. What do you know about the current abortion laws in Victoria? Um, I know that it used to be a lot more strict, but other than that, I don't really know much. Have you or anyone you know ever been affected by the loss of a loved one? Yes. If you heard that a pregnant woman died, for example, in a car accident, would you consider that child in her womb as a second death or not? Yes, because once um, a lady is pregnant, uh, already another person is being born, it's been coming to life, so yes, there'd be two deaths, not one. When do 
does human life begin? Right after, like, right as a egg inside the lady. It's safe to say that an infant is considered as a human, but what about scaling it back to a younger infant who is also developing at three to six months in the mother's womb? At what point would you consider this development human? Right from the start. Under what circumstance would it be justifiable to terminate a child in the womb? Um, I reckon that you'd have to have a pretty serious answer for it and it's up to the parents of that person. Like, you'd have to have like a reason for it. Like, you can't just do it. Like, it has to be a reason for it. So, a health issue yes, or something like, like that? Something like, if that's a better option, then that's how it is. Because sometimes life throws hard obstacles at us and you just need to know what's best for it. What do you think a better option could be to terminate the baby? What do you think? Well, if there is a way to help it in hospital, maybe it might be difficult, but maybe hospitals and such, but maybe so that might be... for the baby yep. in a hospital if it yep. was unwell? Yeah. Do you think people are influenced by political and social pressures to abort a child? Sometimes. It depends on the person's life and what they're at and how much they look at it and all, I guess. In Australia, 100,000 unborn children are aborted yearly. What do you think of this? That's, a, that's a, like a lot because like, we don't think of it, but like, once it comes up to us, it's just pretty amazing to think of. Like, you wouldn't think it would be that much. And if another sector of our human race were so mistreated, would you be motivated to stand up and say or do something for people rights and the unborn? Yes. What would you what would you consider doing? Depends what life throws at me, it depends how I have to take it, take it day by day and just see how I go from there. Would you be prepared to talk to politicians and things yeah. like that? Fantastic. Look David, thank you so much for coming today. No worries. We really appreciate thank speaking you. with you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye.